This is for DI31-1. So let's kind of take a look at it. Let's do number two. So number two, it says cosecant of seven pi twelfths. And we know that seven pi twelfths is kind of difficult to calculate, so we can always convert it in degrees. So I take that seven pi twelfths, multiply it by 180, divide it by pi, and that cancels out. You're gonna get about 105 degrees. So the cosecant of 105 degrees. So now, kind of working through this piece, I don't know what cosecant is. We didn't learn a sum and difference identity for cosecant, but I do know sine. So I'm gonna think of it in terms of the reciprocal. So if I use sine, I could say this is 45 degrees plus 60 degrees, and then that's gonna be sine 45 cosine 60 plus cosine 45 sine 60. Now the sine of 45 is root 2 over 2, cosine of 60 is 1 half, plus cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2, sine of 60 is root 3 over 2, and so this simplifies into root 2 plus root 6 all over 4. But this is the sine value. We want to know what the cosine value is. So we do the reciprocal. Now that it's the reciprocal, this is what the cosecant of 105 equals. But dot, 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 because I still have to rationalize. And so just to give another little hint on that, you multiply by the conjugate. But I'll leave you guys to the algebra on that. Let's look at another one. Let's look at number four. So for number four, it says find the cosine of alpha plus beta, given that cosecant alpha is three. So if cosecant alpha equals three, that means that sine of alpha equals one third, right? Because it's the reciprocal. And it says that alpha is between zero and pi halves. So here's zero, here's pi halves. So if alpha is in there, that means my reference triangle is in quadrant number one. And it says in beta is in quadrant number two. So this is my alpha, this will be my beta. And we said that it's in quadrant two. And my tangent of beta is negative seven. So tangent of beta, opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent because my x is moving in the negative direction, that's why my x value is going to be negative. And for the sine, we said opposite over hypotenuse. So that means this is gonna be, if I use the Pythagorean theorem, that'll be root eight, which is two root two. And if I use the Pythagorean theorem here, 49 plus one, that'll be the square root of 50, which is the same as five root two. Okay, so I figured out the triangle for alpha and I figured out the triangle for beta. Now let's just focus on the identity itself. It says cosine of alpha plus beta. Well, the identity for that is cosine alpha, cosine beta. For cosine, you do the opposite. So minus, then it'll say sine alpha, sine beta. So now I need to use my triangles to find what cosine alpha is. So in this instance here, cosine alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse. So this will be two root two over three. The cosine beta, I'm gonna look at this triangle, cosine beta, that's gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse. And then minus sine alpha, well, we already defined that sine alpha is one third. And then sine beta, I have to look at this triangle again. My sine beta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So that's seven over five root two. 
And so now, all I have to do from here is just simplify it. And I'll leave that to you guys. Okay, moving on. Number seven. For number seven, it says find the slope intercept form of the line that passed through the points. So for us to create a line, we need two things, a point and a slope. So the first thing I should do is find my slope. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's going to be 5 over negative 5, which is negative 1. So I use that point, maybe, I don't know, the first one, the point 2, negative 1, and then the slope to create my line. So y minus y1 equals my m times x minus x1. Now it says find the slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. So this is y plus 1, negative x, and then positive 2 because I distributed it minus the one on both sides, I get y equals mx plus b. And that's going to be my answer. Next one. Now I'm only going to do a few of these, but a few things to remember. Your cost function, which is given to us, that's 18x plus 240. And then it gives us our price demand function. So that's a lowercase p. So when it says find and interpret c of 0, I'm literally just plugging 0 in for there. So it'll be c times 0 equals 18 times 0 plus 240. And that's my cost when I produce nothing, or my startup costs. Now c bar of x, that's just c of x. You take that and you divide it by whatever x is. So if it says c bar of 10, you're taking your cost function, plugging in 10, and then you're dividing that entire statement by 10. When it says find and interpret lowercase p of 5, well, I'm plugging in 5 into my price demand function. It says simplify r of x. Your revenue is x times your price demand function. So that's going to be x times 90 minus 3x which is 90x minus 3x squared, or negative 3x squared plus 90x. It says find the profit function p of x. Now capital P of x, that's revenue minus your costs. So your revenue, we just said, was negative 3x squared plus 90x. Now minus our costs, which is 18x plus 240. Now you'd simplify that. Then it says solve p of x equals 0. So you would just set your profit function that you find here equal to 0. And then you may have to use some sort because it's going to be a quadratic equation because that's the highest value is the square. And then you're going to have to use some sort of quadratic statement to be able to solve that.